one heck of a week one. Let's get after it for week number two. This is big time. The ACC opener and a top 15 team is in town in the Carrier Dome. Former Big East foes now meeting for the third time as ACC rivals Louisville and Syracuse. And you're watching the ACC on ESPN. The boys in studio were talking about him. Here's a look at him. Lamar Jackson, responsible for eight touchdowns a week ago, six passing, two rushing. Now, those are numbers that Taj Boyd put up as an ACC quarterback back in 2012. That's the type of stratosphere that this guy is getting to, a skill set representative of a guy that could be a Heisman-type candidate. Well, absolutely, Adam. He's a guy that did all that in the first half. But he's a guy that can run the option. And when you can run the option, it controls everything they try to do on defense. Good read, turns up Phil. He turns on the Jets. He can outrun everybody. Bobby Petrino's trying to get him to stay in the pocket. But he, when he looks downfield, nothing's there. Again, he has the Jets. He turns them on. He can turn a bad play, a, a play that doesn't have a chance in the passing game, to a great running play. But after this spring, Bobby Petrino taught him to stand tall in the pocket, look at his reads, and throw the ball downfield. And now he is a pocket passer. So he's the complete quarterback and should be fun to watch tonight. We get to watch him in person. Adam Amin, Mac Brown, Molly McGrath is with us as well. Big quarterback performances week one. DeAndre Francois, Deshaun Watson got a win on the road. Shane Buchel, where does this guy stack up next to those guys? I think he's right in the middle of it. Last year, he was very young. He struggled some making the right decisions, learning the offense. Bobby Petrino is one of the best teachers in the country of quarterbacks and running offense. And this guy is, is playing at a very high level after week one. So he's obviously got a great offensive skill set. Molly, how does Syracuse need to defend this guy? Well, Adam, we talked to Syracuse's defensive coordinator, Brian Ward, about just that. And he said that preparation for Lamar Jackson was especially difficult because it's impossible to emulate his speed and athleticism in practice. So he said instead, they're going to take advantage of some of his weaknesses. Taped up in the defensive meeting room of the Syracuse players is a picture of Jackson with the message, hunt the football. Jackson has had problems with ball security in the past, so Syracuse's defense will use every opportunity to try to strip the ball away from him. They've been harping on this all week, and Bobby Petrino admitted that Jackson has a bad habit of grabbing just the lower half of the ball out of snaps. So they've made an effort to change his grip of the football, but this is definitely something that Syracuse will focus on, Adam. On the offensive side, Molly, Dino Babers comes in, and I don't know how much Piper Chapman prep you've done, but Orange is the new fast. That's the new motto for Syracuse football. They ran 81 plays a week ago, bringing that Art Bryles baylor offense into Syracuse now. Well, he's got a lot of continuity on his staff, so they got off to a really good start, but you've got to have an accurate quarterback. Eric Dungy hit the first 13 straight throws last week to get started against Colgate. He's a guy that's very accurate, and he can hit the short control pass throws that are like runs in this offense. But he can also give you the play action. You see the safety coming down deep. He can go over the top to his Maryland transfer, Amba Etatawa, and that guy is fast. He can fly. Caught 12 balls last week, and right now he's leading the country uh, per reception. Then, when nothing's there, not like Lamar Jackson, but he can pull it down and make enough plays with his feet to make a first down if, if they've covered everybody and dropped off. Should be a great quarterback battle tonight, Adam. The last time Syracuse knocked off a ranked team, it was Louisville in 2012 as Big East team. ACC opener, the ACC on ESPN from the Carrier Dome. It is hot, it is stuffy. I know some fans in Central New York were excited because it was announced that they're eventually going to put air conditioning into this place, but it is going to be hot tonight at the Carrier Dome for Bobby Petrino and his Louisville Cardinals. Very solid work so far. This is a program that has gone to six straight bowl games, and they've continued the success for this program with Bobby Petrino. Meanwhile, Dino Babers is into the ACC. One is... Syracuse debut last week now in his ACC debut. He was a winner at Eastern Illinois He was a winner at Bowling Green and trying to make a winner out of Syracuse a team that has not been to a bowl game in three years Louisville won the toss. They'll get the ball first Seth Dawkins Travion Samuel are back to return and Cole Murphy will get the ACC campaign underway Adam it shows you the confidence in Bobby Petrino's offense when you win the toss and take the ball not a lot of people will do that, so he feels like he needs to get a quick start tonight.
The matchups may not be as good in week two. We know that. Week one set a high bar, but let's try to get after it. Let's have some fun this weekend. Off we go from the dome. A returnable kick. It will be Seth Dawkins from inside his own five-yard line. And the freshman out of Columbus, Ohio, has it across the 25. So Lamar Jackson, a sophomore out of Boynton Beach, Florida, committed to Bobby Petrino and Louisville on the phone when Bobby Petrino was sitting in his hotel room two years ago preparing for this game in this building. Now Lamar Jackson takes over as the full-time starter. As a coach, you remember when and where those great ones commit to you. And Bobby pointed across the room yesterday, right over there. I was sitting in that chair on this Friday, Thursday night before a Friday night game when he committed. On first down, it's Jackson to throw. And he's going to take a deep shot downfield. James Quick. And he's going to take it to the house. What a start for the Cardinals. A loud Louisville touchdown to silence the Syracuse crowd tonight on a Friday. 6-0 on 72 yards downfield. I guess Coach Petrino was right by taking the ball, getting a quick start. He's got a play-action pass, throws the post, wide open, touchdown to get the game started. And the first half agrees with Louisville so far this season. It certainly agrees with Lamar Jackson. Good play action pass. What they're going to do is make a good fake off tackle. They're going to hold the safety. And this guy, James Quick, one of the best players to ever play at Louisville, maybe the highest, highest recruited player, uh, beats a great safety. Antoine Cordy, one of the best players on the Syracuse team for a touchdown. So Anthony George, one of three kickoff men for Louisville, kicks it away, and Grizzly Esteem trying to get a decent return, and he gets wrapped up at the 22-yard line by Stacy Thomas in special teams. And Eric Dungey, another sophomore out of Lake Oswego, Oregon, started seven games as a freshman, has dealt with some concussion issues in the past. He's coming off a solid performance against Colgate last week. Let's see how fast Syracuse goes. They empty it out on first down and immediately a completion across the 40 yard line. They find Irvin Phillips and let's see how fast they go after an eight yard pickup. Second down, two. So now Dungey will check the play. This will be the times when they do slow down, but this is going to be interesting to watch. How will Louisville defend this? Well protected is Dungy. Now the pocket begins to collapse, and Drew Bailey will wrap him up. Nothing downfield. Even with a light rush, Dungy gets taken down. These guys at Louisville are playing man coverage. They're going to give them multiple looks. They're going to try to put pressure on the quarterback, but they're going to make sure that they put pressure on Dungy before he can get rid of that ball. So after a solid first down gain, they're back to third down and 10 from the 35 yard line. Getting a little bit of help from Dante Strickland with the protections. Off play action, pocket collapsing again. Dungy rolling away from his arm side, tossing downfield for Amba Anatawa, and he could not corral it. Good coverage by Jair Alexander. Amba Anatawa is a downfield threat. He was at Maryland in three years. He has become one at Syracuse as well. Good stop by Louisville. Very good stop by Louisville because these are the guys that uh, knew they would have to keep him from throwing the ball deep. They wanted to keep him in front. If you play man coverage, you're going to have some one-on-one -on -one situations. And Zaire Alexander made the play to keep them from getting the deep ball. Good series by the Louisville defense. Well, Sterling Hoffrichter, rookie punter, will kick to Alexander. Just came up with that pass breakup. High snap, handled. And Hoffrichter booms it away. Fair catch signaled at the 20. Good punt to 45 yards after the Matt Keller snap went a little high. We'll step aside. 
Lamar Jackson sets up. They added five yards to the end of the return due to a penalty against Syracuse. Brandon Radcliffe takes it out to the left across the 30-yard line. Cordy brings him down. No shock, James Quick is part of our impact crew. Absolutely. Number 12, James Quick is the only five-star to come into Louisville. Maybe the high, most highly recruited player. He got out to a great start because he can run the double route and he can run it deep. And then you go to number four for Syracuse, Zaire Franklin. He goes sideline to sideline. He's a smart guy, tough guy. One of only four sophomores to be voted captain last year. Jackson, beautiful touch over the middle, and he's got Jalen Smith downfield. Smith breaks a tackle, and Jalen Smith hustling inside the 10-yard line, and this Louisville long ball is on fire right now from Lamar Jackson. 61 yards on that pass play. Bobby Petrino was excited about Lamar Jackson sitting in the pocket. He's got the street route down the middle, and he hits one of the better players on their football team because they've got some receivers that can really run, and Jalen Smith is a big, tall guy that can make plays. Here's Jackson. Look at the shifty maneuvering by Lamar Jackson, and he is into the end zone. Another Louisville touchdown. We haven't even played three minutes yet. Adam, we talked about uh, how quick this quarterback is and how strong he is. He comes off the zone read. He fakes it up inside to his running back, Radcliffe, and he follows him about untouched. But this guy is quick enough. He can get you off balance. Then he can run through your arms. Evan O'Hara is on for the extra point, and that'll make it a 14 to nothing lead for Louisville. Two possessions, two touch passes by Lamar Jackson, and this scamper and dance and groove into the end zone. He's got 10 touchdowns in less than five quarters this season. On this field, so far, we haven't played three minutes. Lamar Jackson hasn't even played three full quarters yet this year. Two quarters last week, not even a full one this week, and already responsible for 10 touchdowns. Seven through the air and three on the ground. One of each so far tonight. And Anthony George will kick it short. Grizzly Esteem will have a returnable opportunity here. And he gets stacked up right near the 25-yard line. There have been significantly large crowds at various sporting events, not just in the United States, but across the world. The Montecanya hosted one of the most impressive soccer matches ever, 1950 World Cup, Brazil versus Uruguay. And remember, that is in Rio or in Brazil, so naturally that would be the case. Australian rules football had 121,000 in 1970. Super Bowl 14 between the Steelers and Rams at the Rose Bowl. And then... Michigan seems to have the biggest attendance marks in college football history. No surprise at the big house. As Syracuse starts this drive for the 26, and Strickland has nowhere to go. How is that impacting Virginia Tech and Tennessee going into a big atmosphere like that? Well, Adam, it's very unique. They both play in, in front of big crowds, and they, they travel well. But they would go work out today in that arena and make sure to how far is it from the dressing room to the field. and. Uh, Make them go through and look at their lockers and all that kind of stuff to make sure they're comfortable for tomorrow. Strickland with nowhere to go once again. He picks up just about two yards running into Chucky Williams. Coach, you love this offense. Syracuse is fun now. People are excited, but three and outs aren't going to help the tempo. It's a killer. It's one thing about the up-tempo offense. You have to make first downs. You have to stay on the field. Three and out kills you with your defense. Dungey designed run, and how about Drew Bailey getting off the block, shedding it, and just wrapping up Dungey, bringing him down to make it fourth down. Very impressive start by the Louisville offense, but this Louisville defense with Todd Grantham is just as impressive. They are smothering them up front. They're playing man coverage outside. They knew they wanted to push the pocket and get pressure inside, and they're all over Dungey early in this ball game. and Drew Bailey has shown up a couple of times here early. So Hoff Richter will have to punt once again. The long snapper Matt Keller went a little too tall last time. But a good punt from Hoff Richter. Replacing Riley Dixon, who you saw last night, punting for the Denver Broncos. This one forces a fair catch inside the 30, a 43-yard kick. This guy's a big-time player. It'll be fun to watch tonight and throughout the year. Don't forget, Louisville plays Florida State next week at home. On first down, he pulls it. It looked like he was handing it off, and Lamar Jackson pulled it, 
and took off. Are you kidding me with this guy? Slows up for another touchdown. Lamar Jackson, you are ridiculous. A 72-yard pass play for a touchdown. A 72-yard run for a touchdown. The folks here are flabbergasted. Zone read out to the outside. Keeps the ball. Looks a little bit like a guy used to coach number 10, Adam. Yep, I would Big tall so. guy that could outrun him. He faked him out. He handled the option with perfection. So he's learned how to handle the option. He's smart and fast and scored again. O'Hara chips it in for another extra point. We haven't played five minutes, and Lamar Jackson is already dropping jaws, opening eyes, and making men miss on this carrier dome field. Two hundred and twelve yards, two rushes, two passes. That's all he's needed to get to that mark. Already three touchdowns. And what did we talk about at the top, Mac? Molly gave us a great report about the mesh point trying to make the right decisions and grip the ball better. It looked like he did it here. He's got the ball midway through. He's got a really good ride with his tailback red foot. And then he steps back away from the collision and it gives him a chance to look downfield and attack the next defender. He takes him out and then he's got the skill to be electric and go score. The guy is really good. We're seeing one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Remember, this is three quarters, not even. This is not even two and a half quarters yet that he's played. He only played one and a half last week, and he's put up just eye-popping numbers so far. George kicks away again. Esteem will have a chance from the three-yard line. Can Syracuse get something going? Not much there, shy of the 25-yard line. To give up the middle to Mo Neal, the true freshman out of Gastonia, North Carolina, who took his first career carry last week for a 49-yard touchdown. Two yards there. DeAsian Richardson on the stop. Second down and eight. And again, Dungey will look back towards the sideline. Louisville's giving him so many different looks. He's trying to go fast to limit their looks. Dungey with the handoff once again, and there goes Mo Neal. He's already making a name for himself here in Central New York. D. Smith takes him down after a 17-yard run. Young freshman from Gastonia, North Carolina. Fun for him to be out there really quick. Good vision up inside. Dungy swings it out wide for Grizzly Esteem. Makes a man miss. And Esteem is able to work his way near the first down marker. Shoved out by Jair Alexander. It is good enough for a first down. And Adam, coaches call that a run pass option because it was the zone read. And Dungey could have turned up, but instead he saw the outlet route and threw it to him. There's a lot of those sideline to sideline options for this team. Here it is again. Now it's Steve Ishmael, one of their bigger, better possession receivers. He works his way for a solid gain. He'll pick up six there. Yeah, he was their top receiver last year. He's got the total package. They just haven't been able to get it to him as much, but he'll be a factor tonight. So they go three on one side. They come to that side. Now they got three on the opposite side. They go Mo Neal across the 25-yard line close to the first down. Josh Harvey Clemens was there for the stop. Let's see if they give him another first down or not. And this offense gets the defense on their heels. Yep. They can't call defenses. They're standing around. They're having trouble getting lined up in time. Short yardage on third down. Dungey gets the first down. Now this is what Syracuse wanted to look like. This is what Dino Babers was saying when he said Orange is the new fast. You're giving your defense a chance to rest, and you're wearing out, wearing down the Louisville defense, but you've simplified them with your tempo. Dungey. Swing it out for Neal. Good block by Ishmael. Good tackle by Alexander in space at the 18-yard line. Guys, 335 pounds with this tempo offense. That's tough on him. So Syracuse in the red zone on second down. Neal is trying to work his way to the 15-yard line into a pile. Picks up two yards there. Another crucial third down here for Syracuse. We could very well see this be a, a four down area simply because you're down 21. Yeah. So they need seven. They don't need three points here. They've got targets on the wide side of the field in that trip set. Quick pass over the middle. They find Grizzly Esteem for a touchdown. This is what Syracuse wanted to look like.
It is loud. The excitement is palpable when this offense gets going. This is what they wanted to see here in Syracuse, New York, with Dino Babers bringing in the Falcon Fast offense from Bowling Green and saying orange is the new fast. That happened pretty quickly. Quick 15-yard strike from Dungy to Brisley Esteem. Adam, they blitz from the field. Perfect call, perfect play. Read the hot touchdown. We might see some points, I get the feeling tonight, Coach. Maybe. I think so. Some points tonight. Louisville with an absolute blitzkrieg in the first half of the first quarter. Syracuse, when it finally got some first downs and tempo going, Dino Baber's offense looked like what it wanted to look like. And if you're Brian Ward, the defensive coordinator for Syracuse, you got to figure out some way to keep them in front of it. But he said we can't give up explosives, and that's what's happened here early in the game. Yeah, to say the least. Seth Dawkins, the freshman. And he gets taken down inside the 15-yard line. Good kickoff coverage by an orange special teams unit that maybe has a pep in its step after a touchdown. Play action, Jackson downfield again. 50-50 ball hold in by Jamari Staples. Action Jackson is right right now inside the 15-yard line, beating Cordell Hudson. Once again, the protection was so good. He had time to wait on the deep ball. The perfect throw up to the tall receiver. He jumped up high, and he caught the ball over Staples for another huge gain. They can't continue to give up these explosive plays. The six foot four Staples hauling that one in. Jackson pulls and keeps. This guy is something else right now. This is jaw dropping to see what Lamar Jackson is doing. Another score after another long pass play. That's like magic. His ball handling is so improved that Molly talked about earlier since last year. He fakes the ball up inside and he walks into the end zone untouched. You would think he would be getting attention. It's hard for him to be untouched. O'Hare on for the extra point. My goodness. The kick is good. And again, it was set up by another long pass play. This time it was the six foot four Jamari Staples. Adam, let's watch his ball handling. Fakes it up inside. Good ride again. He he gets the lead block by Houtini. And he walks in there untouched. Esteem will have another chance from the two yard line. And not much room to go anywhere. Down to the 15. Play of the first quarter. Getting a set for the second Saturday of the college football season on this Friday night with the ACC opener. And it's the ACC on ESPN. On first down, it's Dante Strickland. And this Louisville defense flies to the football for a loss of one. Adjustments, coach, on the offensive end for Syracuse. What do you want to see? The coaches said they've got to move the launch point because they can't block Louisville. They can't block all the blitzes. They can't even block them sometimes with just the front four. So they've got to have it out of his hand quick, and they've got to move the launch point, meaning he'll have to sprint right or left, have a play action pass, but they're going to have to start doing more of that. Josh Harvey Clemens is down on the ground, arguably Louisville's best defensive player. Uh, was a very player. good defense last year to begin with. And perhaps more cramping is an issue here. And it's already been a problem tonight. Again, not sure if that's the issue. They have removed his shoe, and he is coming off the field. Dino Babers wants to go fast. He ain't first or last, he says. Well, I don't know if he said it. Somebody said it in some movie or something. But unbelievable numbers from Louisville, from Lamar Jackson specifically. The one touchdown drive for Syracuse looked great. Up the middle, they go back to Strickland, and nothing there. Ripped out by Keith Kelsey. It's going to be third down and long. Two runs, you're back to third down and long, and you give Todd Grantham a chance to dial up some blitzes, which is what they do best. At this point, why not blitz? As you see Harvey Clemens back in, potentially for a third down blitz play. They've emptied it out. No extra protection. Four-man rush. Fields was coming in. They whip it forward for Strickland, and he's got the first down. 
on third and long. Another one of those quick slings from Dungey for 18 yards. Really good job with formations of putting the tailback outside the wide receiver and having him come back inside on the screen. Strickland burrowing forward past the 45-yard line. Devontae Fields had him by the ankles. Pick up three yards there, second down. Did Syracuse get a first down, they just did, and they get the offense going. Pressure coming, and Dungy lost the football. It was loose, it's still loose. Back behind the 30-yard line. James Hearns knocked it free as Dungy was bobbling. Hearns had the wrap around Dungy. And Dungy ended up just losing the football, and now who's at the bottom of that pile? The Asian Richardson's pointing already towards the end zone and saying that it should be Louisville ball, but the officials look like they're ruling it to Syracuse, and Omari Palmer, the veteran, is able to recover. We talked about you've got to get the ball out of your hands quickly. You cannot hold the ball that long, and James Hearns, a, a really highly recruited player that committed to Florida and then had some academic issues and came late to Louisville, is a really good football player and pass rusher. So. You got to get the ball out of your hand, Eric. You cannot hold it. And then, obviously, you can't have a turnover and give Louisville a short field. So lucky they got the ball back. Third down and real long. Probably just sling it deep. Well, touch towards the sticks and over the head by a decent margin of Steve Ishmael. Adam, we're talking so much about the Louisville offense. This Louisville defense is really good. Yeah. They're, they're good at every position. When you can take a guy like... Uh, uh, Josh Harvey Clemens that doesn't have to come out. He's a linebacker. He's a safety. He can play all over. It really helps you against tempo defenses or tempo offenses where you can't substitute. So Hoff Richter, who's had a busy night already. Punt for the fifth time. That's a bullet. Jair Alexander back to the 20. No fair catch. Trying to get past the first wave. Excellent coverage by Syracuse inside the 20 yard line. A 52 yard boomer from the redshirt freshman. Good coverage. It's Louisville ball. Impressive play. Guy fakes the run up inside. He's got the option look to his left. He turns his shoulders downfield and throws a dart. That is really hard to do for a young quarterback. Pressure coming from Syracuse. He gets rid of it for a first down to the 40 yard line, and it's Cole Hicatini again. That has been a safety valve tonight for him. Coach Petrino said this guy's learning concepts. They come after him here. They've got the all out blitz. He gets it out of his hands fast. He keeps his eyes downfield. Really good first down. Syracuse blitz. It's fired off quickly to the sideline, and Travion Samuel has it at the 49 yard line for another. Louisville first down. I can see where Coach Petrino said he gets it out of his hands very quickly. That was an easy throw. He's got big hands, he told us. He can snap his wrist very cleanly. That was what attracted him to Lamar Jackson immediately, just the snap of the wrist and the clean release. They give it to Jeremy Smith on the fake, and Jackson keeps. Pick up yardage to about the 18-yard line, four yards there. Just so impressed with Lamar's faking ability and the difference in when we saw him against Wake Forest last year and tonight, all the things Molly's talked about with Nick working with him and Bobby working with him, he's so much better with the ball in his hands. Got a play coming from Coach Petrino at the bench. One of the more creative play callers in college football. He is regarded as such. Four-man rush. Into the flats it goes, and a good play in space by Corey Winfield to bring Jeremy Smith down right near the 10-yard line, but it is a first down. We also we asked uh, offensive co-coordinator Chris Klanakis yesterday, why is Bobby so good at play calling? And he said he can see all 22, and he has really good recall, so he remembers what they did against something early in the game that he can come back to. Jackson keeps it again, trying to stretch to the edge. What a hurdle by Jackson! Highlight reel touchdown! Lamar Jackson does it again! Put a hashtag on it. SC top 10 worthy going airborne. 
Cordell Hudson comes up. He's in perfect position. You got to keep your head up, but what a leap. I think that's the number one play for Sports Center tonight. Count it tonight. Lamar Jackson with his fifth total touchdown, fourth on the ground. And Louisville comes up with another impressive highlight reel play from a kid who's becoming a star in the opening two weeks of the college football season. He runs a 4-4-2. He's got a pretty good vertical leap, and he's putting stats on the sheet here tonight. Over 300 passing, over 100 yards rushing, five TDs. He has played less than four full quarters of college football in 2016, and he's already responsible for 13 touchdowns. And he's got a lot of courage. When you're there, you usually fake them out, try to go inside or outside. It takes a lot of courage to leap over a guy. Special. I don't care who you're who you're playing on the other side. I don't care how young they are. I don't care. This is special. And yeah, can he do it against Florida State? We'll find out next week. And that will be impressive if he can. And people will be frozen about it if he can't. But this is special right now. And it is all Louisville right now. Eric Dungy with a nice soft touch over the middle for Steve Ishmael. And a big play for Syracuse to get inside of Louisville territory. Brought down at the 47. It's a 32-yard pass play. With 3-9 left, you've got to try to get something on the board, Adam. Take a little confidence, a little momentum into halftime. And remember, Syracuse will get the ball to start the second half. So a touchdown at the end of this half would be massive just to stay alive in this game. Dungy protected, now flushed out. That was behind the line of scrimmage. He fires downfield. Amatatolo breaks two tackles. And another touchdown, Syracuse. Seven yard strike to their deep ball threat that they've added from the University of Maryland. Amba Atawo taking it deep. Two good passes from Dungey and a great individual effort by Amba Atawo. Well, and good focus for a team that's down 35 to 7 for them with uh, less than three minutes left to go in the half to make this play. And Dungey extended the play. His legs were good. He's going to his left. He throws back across his body. Shaq Wiggins and Chucky Williams run together. And this big man's a football player. Big, fast, can catch, tough. He is a great transfer coming in here from Maryland. So here is Seth Dawkins from the one yard line. And he gets stacked up at the 15 yard line. Special teams coverage getting it done for Syracuse and Jonathan Thomas with the stop. If Syracuse can get a stop right now, they'll have potential field position as well. Massive play to try to stay in it. They see they're not blitzing. They've changed the offensive play from the boundary. Huge play on third down. They rush just three. Eight back in coverage. Deep down the middle, and it's incomplete. And Syracuse will get the ball back with 2.23 and three timeouts. That is an eternity for this tempo of an offense for the Orange. You go back and look at the, the, the play. It was very well covered this time. You look at linebacker. Strickland was running down the middle, or Franklin was running down the middle of the field. But really the coverage came from a younger player, Carl Jones, but they had it covered well. That was a really good series by the Syracuse defense. They showed blitz, they backed out, but they had really good coverage. So Nick Petrino talking with Lamar Jackson after a rare three and out. Mason King punts it away. Brisley Esteem will happily fair catch at the 46. Plenty of time, excellent field position for Syracuse in a game where we've already seen 49 points. I don't expect this thing to automatically be over in a 21-point game. You still got plenty of time and all that, but you could have really used that field position if you're Syracuse and Dino Babers. And again, remember Syracuse gets the ball to start half number two. So what does Eric Dungy have in store? An emotional last week for Eric Dungy. He's getting ready for their opening game against Colgate. 
hadn't seen his older brother Matt in quite some time. His older brother Matt was serving overseas for the United States Army and infantrymen. He and his family had a surprise waiting for him. Dungey was ready to meet his brother again. What's up, dude? <laughs> Dude, I'm so glad to be here right now. I finally get to see you play, dude. <laughs> Dungey rolling out on first down. He'll fire incomplete. And he got some contact with him out of bounds from Devontae Fields, and a penalty marker was thrown. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 92. Defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. A frustrating play for Fields, who kind of looked at him while he was coming back towards the huddle. He said, what am I supposed to do? Ends up getting tagged with a personal foul. You got to pull off. Yep, you got to slow up. He was trying to, but not enough, and that's a penalty. And hit the quarterback. You said it's frustrating for Fields. It's frustrating for Coach Grantham, too. <laughs> right. I can promise you he didn't need to give up that first uh, 15 yards on first down. So right back near the 45-yard line, and in traffic, it's caught by Irvin Phillips. Picks up eight yards there. We're seeing... Eric Dungey get a lot more comfortable in the pocket. He's getting the ball out of his hands quickly like his coaches want him to. Strickland helping make the checks at the line. To the sideline, it is caught by Amba Adetawo. He muscles his way for a few extra yards. He's got the first down, pushing Chucky Williams off of him. Here's a 6'2 body, it's 202 pounds, hard to tackle, hard to cover one-on-one. -on -one. Syracuse still going up tempo. Their 50th offensive snap is a throw over the head of Edatawo and incomplete into traffic with some defensive backs out there. Yeah. Keith Kelsey came through with a hit. He blitzed. He's a heady guy. Second down and 10. He knew how to hit him, knew when to hit him. It was within the rules, but it really disrupted what probably would have been a touchdown. They go twin stacks here. Here's the fake. Now the run pass option to the outside for Phillips. And he picks up a couple of yards to the 33. Coaches get cute with that item. They call it the ROP or the RPO, run pass option. That has significantly made an impact on offenses in college football the last five to ten years. Defensive coaches hate it. This is a give to Strickland, who breaks free. He's got the first down inside the 25-yard line. Tremaine Washington chopped him down, but 12 yards there, and Syracuse right on top of the ball. Back to the sideline at Atawa with blockers in front, and he gets dragged out of bounds by Zykesis Cannon. They don't have to use a timeout. That will stop the clock at a minute 17. Strickland showed really good patience on that run, waiting till the hole opened and then squirted up through it with his 200-pound body. Fake to Strickland. Back to the sideline, and it's off the body of Fields. Could have been dangerous there had Devontae Fields wrapped that up with his hands, but it brings up third down and four. Third down and four from the Louisville 15-yard line. Eric Dungey, over 200 yards passing on the night. He's tossed a couple of touchdowns to Edatawo and Esteem. They used to say, Adam, that's why those guys play defense, not tight end. <laughs> Louisville rushes four, but at different angles, Dungey trying to do his best Lamar Jackson impersonation. He goes airborne inside the five-yard line. It's first and goal. Anything you can do, I can do better. That's what he's thinking right about now, taking the risk and going up top. He's got a really good drive going here. Needs to score. Needs to get seven. Looking at Atawo again. He's going to give him another chance. And this time, he converts. Touchdown, Syracuse. A two touchdown night for Amba Adetawo and two crucial offensive series for Syracuse on offense at the end of the half and a big defensive series sandwiched in between. Really smart call by Dino Babers. He saw it was open. It was a near miss. Came right back to the same thing because he thought he had a mismatch. Cole Murphy adds the extra point. 
an outstanding effort by Syracuse to come back over 800 yards in the half. And then Burke, boys, what do you got? Back at the Carrier Dome, you're watching the ACC on ESPN, and it's been a wild opener in conference play between Louisville and Syracuse so far. A 21-0 start for Louisville. They led 35-7 at one point. Back-to-back -to -back touchdown drives at the end of the half for the Orange. Just like that, we've got a 14-point ball game, and it will be Orange ball to start half number two. Adam Amin, Mac Brown, Molly McGrath on the field as well. Lamar Jackson was certainly a superstar in that first half, accounted for almost 500 yards of total offense, but made a mistake at the end of that half, forced to throw, and Syracuse has stayed in this game because of some takeaways. They've been able to do this because of turnovers, so it's been an opportunistic defense that just knocks balls loose. They've given up too many explosive plays, but Franklin looks at the receivers. He's going down inside. Really good play. A solid return by Cordell Hudson to start off this second half. And Syracuse ball, as we said, to start this third quarter. A chance to try to work themselves immediately back into this game. A rare mistake by Lamar Jackson at the end of that half. Arguably the only mistake he really made at the end of the half was that forced interception. You know, Eric Dungy, who you thought was starting to gain some confidence at the end of the half, is back out of the field offensively. Really did. He ended much better than he started. The first two series weren't very good. He was very good at the end, very confident. Dungy rolling, moving the launch point. This has worked for him so far. Uh, with the pressure coming, he'll get rid of it. Josh Harvey Clemens, the redshirt senior and the transfer from Georgia, was bringing the pressure. And it brings up second down. Adam, we always talk about the last five minutes of the half. That was won by Syracuse. Syracuse gets the ball to start the third quarter. The first five minutes of the third quarter is equally important to see if Louisville can come back and, and take back the momentum. Dungy one hands that snap. Stepping up, launching a wobbler down the middle of the field, and it's incomplete looking for a steam. Chucky Williams had the coverage downfield, and it brings up third down at 10. Now, if you're Todd Grantham, do you light them up and come after them? Or are you try to third and ten? Do you try to play zone and keep the ball underneath? Already, coach, 60 plays run by Syracuse. We're 21 seconds into the second half. Their program record for a game came 14 years ago against Virginia Tech. They ran 100 plays in that game. Pressure being shown by Louisville, but they're only going to rush three. It comes from a tough spot in Harvey Clemens, and the throw on the move is to the sideline incomplete. Boy, two good plays on that defensive series from the transfer from Georgia. I think you can see probably Coach Petrino and Coach Grantham had a little discussion with the defense at halftime and stirred them back up the second half. If you're not careful, you can lose your focus a little bit when you get so far ahead, and that causes the turnovers, and also it causes some lackadaisical play on defense, but that was a great series to start the second half. So Hoff Richter will punt away to Jair Alexander. We had a couple of good ones in the first half. This one, a line drive that's going to get a really good roll. And Alexander has to bail out. Good job by Hoffrick to the freshman to flip the field inside the 20 with a 61-yard career-best punt. Back, we were talking about turnovers. That's what kept Syracuse in that first half. It is. The Syracuse defense has given up too many deep plays, explosive plays, but they've been really opportunistic knocking the ball loose. These guys have, have made good plays in this situation. You've got Franklin. He's an experienced linebacker. He comes back, and he strips the ball out of... Piccatini, and then this was just a bad play by Lamar Jackson, the only one he made during the ball game. But those three turnovers are what are keeping Syracuse within a chance to win this ball game. Five touchdowns with three turnovers for Louisville so far. And a big burst from Brandon Ratcliffe on the first play for Louisville in the second half. 29-yard sprint down to the 48-yard line. Really good block downfield by Cole Hicatini. This guy not only can catch the deep ball, but he can run with it. Really impressed with Radcliffe. Captain working really hard, lost weight in the offseason. The two big games the last two years against Syracuse, 117 and then 110 two years ago. Jackson has nowhere to go. Good scramble to the football that time off the edge. Jonathan Thomas was there. 
You have to contain and you have to tackle. Probably the most important two things when it comes to Lamar Jackson. Two obvious things, but they're difficult because of his elusiveness. They're difficult, and they're running the option so well. Radcliffe's running the ball well. You've got to keep enough guys around the line of scrimmage that it puts the really good receivers in one-on-one -on -one situations. On second down, Jackson with time underneath for Quick, and he gets past the sticks for a first down. Runs in his eye Franklin, and he picks up a dozen. Down to the 41-yard line. Excellent job by Quick, knowing where the sticks are for the first down. He plants his foot, gets north and south very quickly for the first down. James Quick, really good player. Already has a touchdown tonight. That was on the first play of the game, which feels like a long time ago at this point. I think it was Wednesday. <laughs> Jackson with a smooth-looking fake. Plenty of space to throw. A low toss for Staples, and it is ruled a catch at the 21-yard line. I would guess that this would be reviewed just because it was a close-looking play. Rusty Acre is the replay official. I wonder if they'll give him another shot to buzz down. Didn't seem to. He's got Radcliffe. They're going to reverse this one. Here comes Travion Samuel. He gets a nice cut block in the open field. Breaks a tackle for a touchdown. Excellent downfield blocking. It looked like Tobiah Hughley threw that cut block. And then Samuel took it the rest of the way himself, the sophomore. What a call. Lamar Jackson's been killing them all night on the option. We see the lead option to the field. And they come back and pitch the ball backside. All the pursuit is chasing. Big man makes the, the center, comes back and peels. Captain Tobias Hewley makes the big block on the corner for the score. So Syracuse unable to move the ball to start the half. Louisville comes right back and gets the score. The sophomore out of Phoenix City, Alabama, who had a touchdown last week, has another one in game two for Louisville. They're back up by 21. Louisville doubling up Syracuse in the ACC opener here. 15th meeting all time between the two. Louisville has won 8 of 14. And each of the two meetings in ACC play, and they've been relatively one-sided in those games. 41 to 17 a year ago, 28 to 6 a couple of years ago. Anthony George set to kick off. Back to Anthony George will kick away with Cordell Hudson. And Jordan Frederick back to return. This will be Hudson from the six-yard line. Stays on his feet and then gets chased down by the rest of the coverage unit. Just past the 20-yard line. So it keeps this drive alive after that third down play. And Dungey gets knocked down by D'Angelo Brown, redshirt senior out of Georgia. Playing in the middle of that. You can call it a 3-4, but it's truly a multiple defense. They go different fronts all the time. We've seen it tonight. Play fake. Dungey's protected. Now he's going to roll to his right. Into traffic, and it is caught at the 45-yard line with a penalty marker perhaps thrown on the field. Steve Ishmael somehow snared it. Over. Defense, penalties declined. The pass was complete. The result of the play was a first down. Despite Shaq Wiggins all over him, he caught it at the 45-yard line. Really good job by Dungey buying time. And Ishmael got open. He gets it over Wiggins, two really good football players. They fight for the ball. What a throw and what a catch. Probably the only place he could have thrown it that it would be completed. Yeah, that was incredible. Dungy keeps it on the zone read, stays on his feet and takes off. Eric Dungy shedding a tackle and ripped down inside the 30-yard line. 17-yard run for Eric Dungy. Very unusual for Keith Kelsey to miss a tackle outside. Yeah. That was your run pass option. You saw him stop and look to see if he was going to pass it. And then he turned up and made a great run. His longest run of the night. Amba Atatawa with good blocking on the perimeter. And he's able to break his own tackle. He was able to knock Chucky Williams away with two good wide receiver blocks there to get him nine yards. Dungy now checking the play at the line. Second 10, there'll be four downs here. Won't be any field goals. And at this point, down 21. Dungy on the handoff to Strickland. And Strickland with a powerful run. Forward progress near the six-yard line. Devontae Strickland, the sophomore out of Dayton, New Jersey. 
He's the power back in that backfield. He showed very good patience again. He did this earlier in the game. At Atawa, bottom of the formation. They've gone to him a couple of times on fade routes. Dungey keeps. Dungey inside the five. He's got the first down. First and goal for Syracuse. Got to respect the effort tonight by Eric Dungey, even in a 21-point game. Eric's going to have a really good year. He, he's exactly what they need at quarterback. They want to sneak it. Dungey trying to surge forward. And there is another penalty marker thrown on this play as well. Line judge comes in and signals for a touchdown. We'll have to check the marker on the play. Looks like it's against Louisville. Illegal substitution, defense, playing with 12 players. That penalty is declined. There's no the play. Touchdown. And they'll clearly decline the penalty. They'll take the score. They get points with 6.49 to go in the third. They caught 12 on the field with Louisville, and that's because they go so fast. That's and right. you're trying to substitute and get to your goal line defense. Very good drive after the penalty for Syracuse to get it back to 14. We've talked a lot about Lamar Jackson tonight, and understandably so, but now Eric Dungey's got four TDs, three through the air and one on the ground, and Bobby Petrino's team sees its lead go down to 14. Ensley Athletic Center, Syracuse's new $14 million indoor practice facility. Facility, It's named after Cliff Ensley, three sport letterman of Syracuse. He's the CEO of Leisure Merchandising Corporation in New Jersey and a very generous donation for him to get this Syracuse athletic program a little bit further down. Now it's in the ACC for another year. After joining the ACC a few years ago, now it's fourth season, so trying to get up to speed and New athletic director John Wildhack. Certainly, we have a relationship with him with his long tenure at ESPN, and now it's his job to get this place up to par with a lot of the other great ACC programs. Yeah, John's so excited about being back home and leading this program forward. He took us on facility tour yesterday. That indoor air is going to be worth some wins. You get around the cold weather late in the year, gives them a chance to practice for bowl games. Should be really, really a big help. Out to the 25-yard line of the touchback will come Louisville's offense up by 14. They've got four on the line. They show pressure. They bring Franklin on the blitz. Jackson trying to get away, and he does. Still needs the yardage to the 35 and gets it. And Lamar Jackson somehow finds the alley and turns it into a first down. Boy, Franklin looked like he had him dead to rights, and Jackson runs for 33. For, so frustrating. Franklin comes up inside. This guy dodges about five guys and then makes another one miss out in field. Carl Jones misses the tackle, and he gets the first down. This is what's frustrating in coaching. You had the right call. You had guys in the right place. They just didn't make the play because of the special ability with Lamar Jackson. They're in shot position at midfield, five in the pattern. Lofting it, has a man, Staples going to the ground, trying to make the catch, and he does. Inside the 20-yard line on a gorgeous touch pass for Staples. 32 more yards there, so back-to-back -back plays, they go 65 down the field. Yeah, if he hadn't stumbled, he's gonna go in for the score. An obvious bust by the secondary at uh, Syracuse, but these guys at Louisville can score so fast. Back inside the red zone goes Louisville, where they did struggle last year. Only 59% touchdown rate. Jackson wrapped up inside the 15 by Bennett. Lamar Jackson on the carry. Good carry. Picks up about seven. Harris Bennett makes the tackle for Syracuse. Adam, when you've got one back in the backfield with your quarterback, your quarterback's actually the other running back. Plus one. And he's unaccounted for. Yep. So when you got a guy that can run like this, it's what happened with Colt McCoy and Vince Young for us. It's very hard to defend. Head of steam for Radcliffe and unable to shed Zaire Franklin. That's a big play by Franklin. Just shy of the line to gain and that gives Syracuse an opportunity on third down and short. Let's see what Louisville does here. Franklin was our impact player because they, they love him sideline to sideline. 
He can take it on straight ahead or he can run it down. That'll take us to the end of the third quarter. Third quarter. We said it was going to be a good quarterback battle. Dungey's played really well for Syracuse, but there has been no bigger star than Lamar Jackson. Part of what has been an impressive offensive performance for the Louisville Cardinals for the second consecutive week. They take a 14-point lead into the fourth quarter on a late Friday night at Syracuse. Established in 1870s, Syracuse University. They've been playing football for a pretty long time at Syracuse, and they have never given up this many yards. Louisville has never put up this many yards, but 710 total yards of offense, and we've only played three quarters in this game. So third down and goal. In a two-score game, it's still a lot of time to play. Five receiver set for Jackson. A four-man rush. Underneath. Quick, lost the football. Louisville recovers it back near the nine-yard line, I believe. It looked like it was Khalil Hunter who had it initially. Well, they're going to have to sort out the bottom of the pile. Syracuse is claiming they have it. He missed a 28-yarder on his first collegiate attempt. He's got the nerves out. 26-yarder to make it a three-score game. Nice and easy chip shot that time to get some of the confidence back. That's a big field goal. Makes it a 17-point game, a three-possession game here in Syracuse. James Quick, who popped up the football on third down, had his teammates recover it, get a field goal out of it. It is now a three-score game with 13-plus to play. Here's Hudson from the six, trying to switch fields. And Hudson down to the 20-yard line. This Syracuse team is a team that the ACC is going to have to be aware of. They're scrappy. They didn't quit. They've moved the ball. They don't, they're not as talented or as, as mature, as experienced as the Louisville team. But uh, because of Dungey, if they can keep him healthy, this offense is going to score a lot of points. It's a rocky year last year. A lot of quarterbacks that they had to use. Dungy throws out to Cam McPherson, grandson of the former Syracuse head coach Dick McPherson, three yards of the play. Remember, this was a team that started 3-0, then had an eight-game skid. Scott Schaefer was fired, did coach the final game against BC. They got a win, ended their season 4-8. and eight. But they had so many different quarterbacks that had to come in and out, Dungy included. And Dungy takes a hit. Pressure off the edges. Keith Kelsey coming in. Back to the 15 yard line. Lost back to the 15 yard line. For those of you looking for kickboxing, Glory 33. Currently it's on ESPN News. We're here in Syracuse. Louisville and the ACC opener on top by 17. Adam Amin, Mac Brown. Well, that's the second time that Hoff Richter, the freshman, has shanked a punt. Inside the 45 is where Louisville will have it, up by 17. But uh, we had Memphis a few times last year. Justin Fuente is a really good football coach. On the push. Inside the 25 goes Radcliffe. I saw their actually first loss last year. They had gone 8-0 before Navy took them out. Navy obviously had a very good run towards the end of the season as well. But that was a Memphis team that saw some significant point totals. Granted, they had an outstanding QB in Paxton Lynch, who put up big yards night in and night out, it felt like. Lamar Jackson is doing a lot of the same tonight with this Louisville offense. In two games, not even two full games, Almost 1,400 yards. Hicatini sheds a tackle and is inside the 25 yards. John Wilson forced him out. What you're seeing with Coach Petrino with play selection now is he's trying to be physical. He's trying to run the ball. He's trying to run the clock. He'd like to get another score, but he'd like for him to knock him around and be physical in the fourth quarter. Yeah, Time to get this thing over and go home. Yeah, touchdown will do it. That'll be the knockout blow. Already a three-score game.
Jackson rifles looking for Hikatini and another drop. And that has been an issue tonight for Louisville receivers. So impressed though that he looked at his first receiver, it wasn't there. He turned his eyes all the way to the other side of the field and found Nicotini. And it was a very good throw. It was on the mark, right in his hands. It's a ball he normally catches. So, Bobby Petrino will show some faith in Evan O'Hara. Missed from 28, made from 26 to start his Louisville kicking career. Won the competition in the fall. And this high arching kick will get through from 41. Now he can go to the boundary. <laughs> I thought he was going to leave. <laughs> if he be, missed the last. Might not be on the, on the plane home if he missed. No doubt. 20-point game. Now this year was the first time that the ACC had two teams in the preseason AP top five. That was Clemson and Florida State at two and four. Those two teams are now two and three. Lamar Jackson has put on quite a show tonight for the Louisville Cardinals, who are a couple points shy of putting up 50 in back-to-back -back games to start the season. I would imagine they would stay in the top 15 potentially, depending on what happens on uh, a light schedule tomorrow. Perhaps could move up a slot or two. You could see three teams in the top 10 potentially out of the ACC, but that's going to be difficult to next week for Florida State and Louisville. Sean Riley. Sean Riley on the return, and he got banged down across the 20. Penn State and Pittsburgh, a matchup that a lot of people have waiting a long time for as well. To the outside, McPherson, he gets drilled in space by Jair Alexander. McPherson's a great story, quarterback at Georgetown, 4.0 student, graduates, comes here. Granddad, one of the best coaches ever. It's got to be fun for Coach McPherson to watch him play. Yeah, college Football Hall of Famer won 66 games in 10 years as the head coach of Syracuse before he got the job with the New England Patriots. And that's when Paul Pasqualoni came in. He succeeded Coach McPherson. Carried on really the, the brunt of that success. The most successful Syracuse team outside of the 1959 National Championship was under Dick McPherson and then in turn Paul Pasqualoni. Another son, Mackey. He's a on GA staff. Yep, he's on, on staff the staff now. got to meet him yesterday. Yes. He and Paul Pascaloni did a lot of great things at Syracuse. Intercepted Jair Alexander stepping in front of Amba Atawa, and then the ball came out loose momentarily and picked up by Shaq Wiggins as it was lateral back. And Shaq Wiggins steps out of bounds. Oh, what a wild play that was. Give Jair Alexander the pick and then the toss to Wiggins to extend it out near midfield. He just ripped it away from Etatawa. Yeah, ball was underthrown. Etatawa should have at least knocked it down. You don't allow the defensive back to catch the ball when you can get your hands on it. He's had an outstanding night, but that wasn't one of his better plays. Don't let there be an interception and a turnover. Now, my buddy Danny Cannell says he had 41 rush yards his senior, negative 41 rush yards his senior year at Florida State. Lamar Jackson is a yard shy of 200 on the night. He will give to Radcliffe, and Brandon Radcliffe will house it. Over 50 goes Louisville. Adam, I'm surprised Danny had that many yards. <laughs> negative 41, it was impressive. He didn't need him. He was throwing touchdowns. That's right. Top tier quarterback, second tier fashion model. And he had Danny some pretty Cowell. good backs. No doubt about it. Speaking of which, Radcliffe with 156 on the ground against Dino Baber's defense tonight. Yeah, he's been very impressive tonight. He, he may be the biggest surprise from Louisville. We've heard about everybody else. They wanted to run the ball better and more. But when you've got a quarterback like Lamar Jackson, all the eyes are on him on the option. Gonna be a lot of north-south plays with Radcliffe throughout the year. Again, three huge games the last three years against Syracuse for the redshirt senior out of Miami. Molly told you he has shed some weight. He's slimmed down. He has shown off the speed tonight. Brandon Radcliffe taking it to the house for a 55-28 Louisville lead. They've had balance. They have weapons. Remember, this is a team that returns 10 starters. All of their skill guys, they return 100% of their yards from a year ago to this year. 
one thing I've always been impressed about the Bobby Petrino teams they move the ball around they spread the ball around to a lot of different players and everybody has a chance to keep this offense balanced. Here's Riley. Riley cutting it up the field. And he's at the 20 yard so line. Riley on the return. So Dungey back out there. And the handoff goes to Mo Neal. Across the 20 yard line by a little bit. We'll bring up second down as we approach eight and a half to play freshman out of Gastonia North Carolina Mo Neal three star recruit out of high school enrolled at Syracuse in January he's been there for spring ball his name's not Mo which I think is hilarious his name's Darius Quantavius Neal Jr. but he has adopted the nickname Mo there goes Mo used to be called little Mo because his dad who was a high school running back played on a high school team that ran the ball a lot. So every time they wanted to give it to his dad they go hey Mo give it to Mo Mo yards we want Mo yards. So when Darius was born he was given the nickname little Mo and he's turned into a regular now but man did he make some kind of impact last week in his first game first touch as a orange player. He really did. He's made some good plays tonight. He's got good vision. He's got outstanding quickness. Now we're seeing a lot of the Louisville backups in their own defense. They need to get their work. And Neil might have lost the football towards the end of the play. And Louisville indeed, with a lot of their second unit guys out there, take it away. Chris Williams, the junior out of Atlanta, who had his first career Fender sack took last the ball week. Away from the runner. That's a fumble. First down, Louisville. We were just bragging on Neil. He goes up inside, and Big Man just takes it away from him. And that's talking about a 300-plus pounder that was stronger than the young freshman. And he absolutely grabbed it and pulled it away. So Lamar Jackson's night is done. Oh, Mac, he's going to fall a yard shy of the 400-200 club. So Kyle Bolin, who started against Syracuse last year, is in the game. And he'll hand it off for Jeremy Smith. And Jeremy Smith is going to bust through just like that. Louisville goes over 60 points. Jeremy Smith. Well, Lamar Jackson wouldn't have had a yard on that anyway. That was all Jeremy Smith taking it to the house. He'll have a lot of records that he's going to break yeah. before he gets Undoubtedly. through. And, and the only record he wants, and right now the staff at Louisville won, is to win all the games. And if he's healthy, they got a better chance than if he's not. And if you're Coach Babers right now, you were trying to run the ball, trying to kill the clock. You have a young freshman fumble, but your defense has not played well the last two plays. So he and Brian Ward will address this tomorrow. And you have to keep playing. You can't let up. Keep playing. Jeremy Smith, junior college transfer from Fresno City, had a touchdown against Syracuse last year, a touchdown against Syracuse this year, halfway through the fourth. Louisville has put up over 800 yards of total offense tonight, plus back-to-back -back weeks of 60-plus, including 70 a week ago, 62 this week. These are Ole Miss-type numbers. Remember last year, Ole Miss had 70-plus in each of their first two games to set a set an FBS record for the most points in the first two games of a year and Louisville right right there still a half a quarter to play we'll see some impressive offense potentially tomorrow Michigan fifth ranked at home against UCF noon on ABC Penn State Pitt two teams that Syracuse beat all the way back in 1959 on route to a national championship and then Wyoming Nebraska noon on ESPN 2 from Lincoln if UCF could use Scott Frost, it, they'd have a better chance. <laughs> Zach Mahoney is the backup QB in the game. Jordan Fredericks with a nice cutback. Got a block, and Fredericks still on his feet. He's out of bounds near the 35 yard line. Good run by Jordan Fredericks. Coach Lamar Jackson, though, was the story tonight. Louisville. 845 total yards. His coach has said he can handle the limelight. He's handled it his entire life. He's always been the best player on the team. He's always been the most talked about guy. Said mom's tough. She, she'll make sure he acts right and does right. 
he was a guy that uh, I asked Bobby, how'd you get him? And he said, well, he wasn't that highly recruited early. And then at the end, Florida tried to come in and get him. And mom said, absolutely not. Our words, our word. And he stuck with Louis. And he had a superstar night tonight. Lamar Jackson led the way for Louisville. And the ACC opener belongs to the sophomore and the Cardinals. So 845 yards of offense, 610 came from Jackson. Kickboxing Glory 33 is coming up next. For Mac Brown, Molly McGrath, our fantastic crew here in Central New York. Adam Abinsink, good night. 62 to